Okay, welcome back to MIDI Box videos. Um, I want to continue playing with the note tracks because there's still a lot more to, to cover with these. And we've already looked at a couple of the parameters that are available on the note tracks, but I want to look at some more and a little bit more about the triggers that are available. Um, clicking Menu Event to see the uh, basically the characteristics of the track. The note tracks have three lengths, 64 steps, 128, and 256 steps. And depending on the length, you get more or less parameters available. And sometimes you want lots of parameters, and sometimes you don't need them. And you'd rather have a long, long, a long track, so you get to choose how you want to use the memory that's available for the track. Um, obviously, parameters take up a lot more space than triggers do. Triggers are just basically on or off and parameters are things like notes or velocities. So I've got this set to the shortest uh, shortest note track, 64, which gives me the maximum number of parameters, even though I don't need them, and the eight triggers that are already always available. Now before, on one of the other videos, we looked at the uh, buttons over here, the A, B, and C, and when I hit A, um, we look at parameter A. Here, let's get to the notes. And you can see right there, parameter A is note. If I hit B, the B parameter is velocity. And if I hit the C button, then I get to choose from the different parameters that are available. And right now they're, of course, note, velocity, length, and then all the rest of them are notes. And we did play with making some chords out of all those notes. But um, what I didn't realize for quite a while was that if I go back into menu event, over here, there's a little spot on the right hand monitor that shows, not only shows, but lets you change the um, parameter list. Now normally you want parameter A to be no, but you don't have to use note. Um, B is velocity and C is length like we've seen already and D is a note. What's neat is though you can say well I don't want any more notes this is just going to be monophonic so I'm going to change that D parameter to um, probability and then right below that there's a flashing light so you press it and that changes parameter D for this track only this track to probability. Let's go to layer E, and we'll do delay, press that button to make it stick, and F, let's get delay, let's try the roll parameter, push the button, make it stick, and these will be saved with the, with the track. Now there's a few more parameters, I'm just going to stick with a few to add to our, our list today. So now my parameter list is shown here and there's the notes. I can go all the way to parameter P which is the 16th letter of the alphabet if I want that many. I'm just going to use a few new ones today. So we'll get back over here alright here's my notes. I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit there's my notes and of course I can change my notes as much as I want. If I go to parameter B, then I've got velocity, and I've got velocity set to modulate the filter. Then we'll leave that one up all the way so you can easily tell where the Beginning, beginning of the track is. There you go. And if I want to get to the other parameters, I hold down this C button down here. Hold down C, and it brings up my choices. And we can go to length. And like we saw before, we can tie things together to make slides. I'm going to keep everything separate for now though so we can 
hear each individual note. And let's go to a different parameter. Let's go to the probability parameter. And they're all set by default to 100% because you want them to play, so it defaults them to 100. Um, if we change the uh, probability of Here's that high note. Let's so 16%. About one out of every eight times it's going to play. The rest of the time it'll just leave a rest there. So that's probability is pretty straightforward. Just be used to add add variation to the patterns. And I'm gonna press the parameter C, and this time I'm gonna go, go to the delay. And right now all the delays are set for zero, of course, which makes sense. And I'm gonna change note number five, which is the second kind of beat. Actually, let's turn the uh, velocity of that up so we can hear it a little better. Um, not sure why it's doing that. Let's change the envelope a little bit. And try it that way. That may be more uh, useful when you have a uh, more percussive sound. Let's, let's try. Gotta be careful not to delay it too long or it'll run into the next note. I think that's what was happening. Kind of interesting to uh, Yeah, I'm running out. I'm running out of space between the notes. If I take some notes out, it'd probably sound a little better. But anyway, that's that's in there to play with. The other parameter I've got set up is the roll. And the roll is kind of like a the ratcheting you hear on like Tangerine Dream type stuff. That's And you can have two, triple it, or four of them, depending on how many, how many, it, how many extra notes you want to play. This might sound a little better if we slowed it down. Let's try that. Let's set the BPM down.
There, double and a triple. There's lots of different, you know, I can get up into the five. And these can be used also to have your velocity change as it plays them. And there's some other roll parameters to make the notes, to change the distance between the notes. And you can even have notes that are uh, playing after the next note in the sequence. So you get some really strange stuff happening that way. All right, back to the notes. Now the other thing I want to look, show you real quick is the triggers. And this is something else that was a little confusing at first to me. Um, take that down. Um, and that is that we can go to the trigger screen, menu and trigger over on the right side. And um, very similar to the parameters, we've got all these different triggers we can set. The default on the A trigger is the gate and then accent on the B. There's a roll similar to what we've been playing with in the parameter. Then there's a glide, which you can basically do the same thing with the length, but you can turn it on and off really quick with the trigger. There's a skip, which is really cool. Um, and then there's um, random gate and random velocity. And so if we go back to our notes, and over here on the left, just like the parameters, there's the trigger buttons. So if I press A, our trigger is set to gate, which you can see right there. If I press B, it's set to um, accent, which I don't have really doing anything at the moment on this patch. But let's look real quick I press C and I can choose um, let's choose glide and now instead of using the encoders which are used for the parameters I'm using the buttons which are used for the triggers and you'll see them light up instead of changing on the screen Turn the sustain up. There, I've got glides set on those. And if we, let's turn those back off. Let's go to the triggers and try the skip. This is one of my favorites to play with. Because when you skip, every skip you add takes one away from the length of the sequence. Because it doesn't put a rest in, it actually skips the note altogether and jumps immediately to the next one. And you can do some pretty interesting things just playing with those skips. Like if you put, let's... Now if I skip
And it's also kind of fun to take the direction, change it to pendulum so it's going back and forth. And go back to the skips. Let's turn our BPM back up where we had it before. Glide. And if I have my uh, parameter B set up for Press B to get the velocity. I can change change that parameter as well as play with my glides or with my skips. So there's a little more for you to play with with your MIDI box using the uh, parameters and the triggers in the uh, note tracks. I know I didn't hit everything, but I think once you get the basic idea of how they work, you can um, you can jump to some of the other ones and look a little bit in the manual and, and sort out pretty quickly what it does. And the neat thing, you know, at first I was kind of, I thought it was kind of strange that A isn't always the same thing and B is not always the same thing. But the cool thing is that uh, our friend Thorsten that writes the software for this for this machine, he keeps adding more parameters and more triggers, and so you can you can uh, take an old track and update your firmware and find out that now you have more parameters that you can incorporate into an old track and add to it. You don't have to start from scratch. You can just find a parameter that you weren't using and change to that parameter H or whatever to the new feature that he's put in, like those nth notes, which are really cool, and um, and use it in the in your um, sequence. So have fun with your mini box. Bye.